My name is Jasmine Dottiwala and my journey in TV has seen me in front of and behind the camera as a TV industry exec and inclusion leader and I'd like to pay tribute to the creative industry's legend that is Simon Albury. Simon was a unicorn and a man who was totally unique, the likes of whom I've never met before. You would spot him in a crowd. He was tall, handsome, had pure white hair and rocked a cream or white suit with his red framed spectacles. His visual brand was recognised and respected way before influencers on Instagram were creating personal visual brands. In fact, something I often teased him about in our early connecting days was, and this is from a very girly fashionista point of view, I always admired Simon's courage when wearing head-to-toe cream or white suits with snazzy colourful ties or cravats. He was a true, confident, effortless style guru and I loved that about him. You never got the impression that Simon was concerned about spilling coffee on his pristine white suit. He just rolled like a carefree don, a maverick, a trailblazer and a mentor to so many of us. His energy was endless. I can't even begin to imagine that aged 80 I will still know and connect with and party with future TV leaders in the way that he did. Simon could be a gentle, jovial giant, holding court with his energy and his booming voice that had people drawn to his magnetic charm. Or he could also be a challenging adversary who would stand up for anyone and hold power and establishment to account. I'm sure I won't be alone in saying this, that Simon made so many of us in television feel like we were his special friend. He connected so many of us to each other. He reached out and commented on our social media posts. He called and congratulated us when we were doing well. He invited us to party with him. He was our personal cheerleaders. There are so many examples, but every time I've given ex evidence at the House of Lords about the TV industry, he's shared the footage across the industry, he would call me to say well done, and really made me feel valued and seen. People like Simon who have had glittering careers and held positions of high esteem tend not to mix and frolic with the working class or juniors who can do nothing for them, but Simon turned that stereotype on the head for me. He was warm and welcoming and couldn't do enough to help people get ahead, progress and connected so many of us. Simon made so many of us feel like we had an elder Yoda figure, a senior who had seen it all, done it all and could guide us in times of frustration or confusion. In fact, so many of my contacts book and new friends exist because Simon thought to connect us, because he thought we'd enjoy each other's energy, and I also know that he connected people because he thought we would all be a force for change together. He knew we were stronger as a movement and not alone and isolated. And let's talk about Simon's courage. Not once did I see Simon cower or flinch when he spoke to people from various industries, whether that's media, television, film, fashion or poetry, anyone from any generation or industry could speak with Simon and he would form a new bond and connection with them. It was mesmerising to see him work a room. Even outside of media conversations, Simon would go out of his way to invite me to ballet performances once he found out that I'd been a ballet dancer in my early days. I know that Simon would want us all to stay connected and keep his legacy alive by speaking up and standing up for inclusion, justice and diversity when it comes to race. In fact, I always think of the Bob Marley song, Get Up, Stand Up, when I think of Simon Albury. I know the spirit of Simon's loud, booming voice with its deep bass and operatic timbre will be something I remember forever and those of us who he impacted will invoke it to continue his work. I hope that as well as having a huge celebration send off somewhere fabulous like St Paul's Cathedral, because of course Simon was an OBE and that's one of the benefits of having an honour that you can use St Paul's, I know that the rest of us in the industry will ensure that there's a living, standing memorial of some sort dedicated to his life's work and kindness to others. I send my heartfelt love, condolences, gratitude and heartbreak in equal measure to Simon's wife Philida and his son David. We will always hold both of you tight. Thank you so much for sharing your husband and father with us. Rest in eternal power, Simon Albury.
that laugh, those glasses, red, unmistakable. This morning, I learned of the sad news. In tree, we would say Nantiye. It means walk well or safe passage. Yet moving me to Ebuzipeni Akasa, he has spoken. His is a massive, massive legacy and it will be so sorely, sorely missed. I'm David Amplijima, an academic from Cardiff University. Eddie Bozio, freelance journalist. Simon was knowledgeable, well-connected, astute and great company. In an industry that relies heavily on patronage, he simply didn't give a toss and used his contacts, skill and influence to open doors for those less fortunate than himself. I remember the morning the BBC invited him to discuss media diversity on Radio 4's Today programme. Simon pointed out that the only people he'd seen with black or brown faces in the newsroom that day were the researcher and the people on security. He'll be sorely missed, particularly his diversity deficit online posts, highlighting the all-white production crews that still dominate the media landscape. And that's how I'll remember him, with fire in his belly, a twinkle in his eye, a fearless champion of those with less privilege. It's been an honour to know you, sir. Oh, thanks, Simone. Um, just the word fire something off before the day starts and all sorts of messages come in but yeah thanks for the opportunity i imagine you will do some editing anyway so uh, please uh, this is something i left on linkedin which sort of came to me so i'll share this in the next um uh, voicemail and uh yeah please do with it as you wish Angela Ferreira here, television producer, paying tribute to the late, great Simon Albury, a formidable speaker, campaigner and activist, a champion of people and his friends' successes and achievements. He was also a man with a great sense of fun, a lover of the arts, music and musical theatre. He loved to go to shows. He loved to support his son David performing, where he'd be on the dance floor, throwing himself around with great energy and where I'd join him. That's a memory of Simon I'll always remember and I'll keep forever. So sorry, Simone. Um, you've probably already gone to the edit with um, the podcast, but this is Marverine and I'll just leave a brief message here. Simon Albury felt like he could have been my granddad. He was so warm and honest and loving. I don't think I've ever met anyone like him in this media industry. And this is a rough old game. I've been a journalist for 21 years. It's rough, it's tumble, it's not very nice at all. A bit like um, a slaughterhouse, to be honest. And whenever I admitted feelings of doubt about where I was going, what I was doing, whether anyone would ever hire me as a freelancer, over the years, I've had lots of blips. Simon would be there to put a metaphorical arm around my shoulders and hug me close and say, don't worry, you got this. You're great. He was such a massive cheerleader, not just for me. I'm sure others have heard similar words from him and he always meant them from the bottom of his heart. He will leave a massive hole in this industry. Not only was he warm and kind, he was also a rabble rouser. I've been to events where <laughs> it'll come to the end of the event and it'll be, any questions please? And you'll hear Simon's voice from the back of the room asking a controversial question that no one else really wanted to ask. And I'd be sitting there going, no, he went there. He actually went there and asked this question. Um, I'm going to miss him so. Um just going to miss him so so much um simon albury you total legend may you rest in eternal peace eddie bozio freelance journalist simon was knowledgeable well connected astute and great company in an industry that relies heavily on patronage he simply didn't give a toss and used his contacts, skill and influence to open doors for those less fortunate than himself. 
I remember the morning the BBC invited him to discuss media diversity on Radio 4's Today programme. Simon pointed out that the only people he'd seen with black or brown faces in the newsroom that day were the researcher and the people on security. He'll be sorely missed, particularly his diversity deficit online posts, highlighting the all-white production crews that still dominate the media landscape. And that's how I'll remember him, with fire in his belly, a twinkle in his eye, a fearless champion of those with less privilege. It's been an honour to know you, sir. My name's Fiona Barthels Ellis. I'm Simon Albury's sister-in-law. Simon's married to my sister, Philida. Up until last year, I was the British Council's global head of EDI. I'm currently an EDI consultant. I undertake investigations and am involved in EDI-themed um, um, complaints. And I'm an independent equality panel member for the Premier League Equality Standards. My brother-in-law, Simon Albury, was an equality campaigner for decades. He and my sister met when Simon lived in Bayswater in the 70s and they married and had David, David Aubrey, my talented nephew. Simon worked in the media as a broadcaster, but also founded the TV company Meridian and headed up the RTS for many years, amongst other things. Simon really, really worked hard to bring in and on minority or minoritised ethnic talent in the TV industry and to raise awareness of the need for diversity and its importance. He was a change agent who used his written and verbal communication skills very effectively and who connected people to strengthen an aim or address a, a problem. He was interested in and supported of my own work in EDI and he was interested in our side of the family. My siblings and I were born in Ghana, so have Ghanaian heritage on my mother's side and Simon visited Ghana many times. And I remember him doing a programme about Jimmy Moxon, who settled in Ghana and became an honorary chief. He also attended my mother's funeral in Accra that David, his son, and of course my nephew, sang at. Our family unit, but of course especially my sister and David, my nephew, have lost a charismatic, intelligent, informed, forthright, principled, talented man who contributed so much to broadcasting and diversifying broadcasting and who was recognized through an MBE for this and who will be remembered for campaigning for equality and for the black creatives which this podcast supports. Thank you for honoring Simon in this way. A tribute for Simon Aubrey, my friend, the conscious voice for our industry and a power of wisdom for good. My name's Miranda Wayland and I am the Chief Executive for the Creative Diversity Network. As I sit here and I think about my journey with Simon, it brings a smile to my face and a sadness in my heart that he's gone. He was a phenomenal force for good in so many different ways. He had a gentle spirit that guided and supported so many of us who truly believe in equity within the creative industry and held the industry to account for its decisions and outcomes, failings and success. He was a proud man who used his privilege his knowledge and his experience to advance others and to make our world a better place for everyone. His knowledge and his wisdom, his growth and his journey was to the betterment of everyone. He was gracious of his time. He was gracious of his knowledge and he had a loving spirit which was felt 
by so many of us. I will truly miss his guidance. He made time when time was often very sparse for him. And the love that he showed others made you feel safe and secure in the knowledge that he held you in the same space. His true love is his family, his son, his wife, and those he held clear and close. And I will always, always remember the little nuggets that at the time didn't feel like it, but were really profound. He had a way to cut through the noise. He had a way to provide clarity when there often wasn't any. And he was a visionary. He expected more from everyone so we could all enjoy what it meant to be creative and be free and authentic without complications. He really wanted to make sure that this was an industry that really embraced all the unique voices that it had to offer. And often that meant that he was seen as an outsider because of his challenge to what he felt wasn't right. And most of us felt the same. He is going to be missed dearly. He brought a uniqueness that isn't often replicated and he brought light when there was often darkness. His friendship was kind and it was warm and it was filled with love. Simon did some incredible things in his career and his journey meant that he was very, very astute to the things that needed to be done and the way things worked and how to cut through it all. He primarily wanted the best, the best from the sector, the best for the individuals he cared about, and the best for those who have yet to come to work in our space. And he kept us all accountable, collectively and individually. I really will miss him. And I thank him for the time he invested in me, the connections he created, the generosity of his spirit, he is much loved and much missed. Hello, my name is Maria St. Lewis. Um, I'm an ex-Channel 4 employee. I worked there for 20 years. And I very first met Simon in 2017, where I was facilitated and hosted, curated as well, um, an event which was titled Diversity in Broadcasting and it looks at the different ways in which broadcasters have represented race and ethnicity over the years, um, how they are doing now and how they could be doing better for the future. Um, so I wasn't aware of who Simon Albury was before this moment in time, but I soon learn exactly who he was and he was amazing and we became firm friends um, as I'm starting to speak in this I'm getting quite emotional and welling up because Simon really was a very very dear friend to me and he was an amazing man a trailblazer doesn't seem like even a strong enough word because he was an absolute legend um, and I know that he touched the hearts of many 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 people um, you knew that if Simon cared for you, that he had your back, he looked out for you, he would go out of his way above and beyond to support you, to introduce you to people, to give you advice, to take you out to lunch, to just show you that he cared, that he saw you, that he heard you and that he was there for you. That was a very special and rare gift that he had and I and blessed and extremely grateful to have had that connection with him um, in the years that I knew him. So our very first encounter, which was in um, Parliament, essentially, the event was in Parliament and he was the very last question of the Q&A that I had and he stood up and he had these red glasses on and a bold tie which were characteristic of, and like a, a real sentiment of Simon because that was 
um, his trademark um, and he stood up and he gave a really difficult question um, and was, it was a telling off and a question within it um, but I received it very well because he was speaking truth and um, I'm a person of truth and he spoke to my soul um, he was essentially asking the question at hand was really had Channel 4 lost its way you know that it was set up with the sheer intention and motivation and purpose of being representative of diverse communities and essentially he was saying that it had forgotten its way and it had let down um, the representation of black, Asian and minoritized ethnicities. Um, he, we had a new CEO at the time it, who is still the current CEO and she was the first female CEO and she offered to answer the question as she was sat at the front um, and I had said no, like I really wanted to answer this question because I wanted to answer it truthfully from my heart and I did, um, I did, I s heard what Simon said, I pretty much agreed with what Simon said, um, I said to him that having the first female CEO was, um, was a landmark really in Channel 4's history because that had never been and I think I felt that it would be really prevalent that we would have to give her an opportunity to you know walk the walk as well as talk the talk because the talk that she had been saying about diversity and representation was really aligned with where Channel 4 needed to be and I said to him it was a, it was it was something that I held on to in the time that I was at Channel 4 um, it sadly didn't happen but essentially that we should give time and then if we come back here and I said I would come back here to Parliament and re revisit this event and this topic if we hit, I think it was five years it was five years that I gave it five or seven um, no it was five I said that um, then that would conclude you know that Channel 4 had lost its way if the dial hadn't shifted and things hadn't changed um, and so that, that's still to be explored, I guess. But my relationship with Simon, um, you know, I can think of when I had challenges with my health, he was there for me. He always checked in on me, called me. We met for lunch at his special place, at his special table that was reserved for him and his many friends and fans, I would say, because I think anyone, myself, especially, I would say, adored Simon and really, really looked up to him. Um, uh, um, what else can I say you know um, when my daughter was um, given her very first show at the Regent's Park Open Air Theatre Simon and his beautiful wife Philida came to watch it um, which was a real joy because you know he went out of his way he was very proud of her and likewise his son is in performing arts and is an amazing performer and um, I was delighted we've taken I'm so pleased to have those pictures and to have had that experience and the memory um, yeah it was delightful made my day made my daughter's day um, and he also when David was in Bob Marley he got tickets for us to go and watch him front row seats never been so close to the front ever it was amazing um, a beautiful beautiful experience and a great moment spent and of course we had dinner before we went and you know he wanted to hear all about what was going on with me how was my career going gave me advice and always 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 connected me to different people um, the last time I think I saw Simon although we spoke we had video calls um, he invited me to his home um, I went to his home, it was myself and my two daughters, Olivia and Sophia, and Simon's beautiful wife, Philida. We, um, he had posted on his Instagram some pictures, which I think were essentially album covers or posters from concerts that he'd gone to over the years. And he was selling them and there was one picture there that had, it was like a kind of art deco psychedelic poster with luminous colours. Um, but within that were images of moons, like, um, and I, I'm, I'm a lover of the moon and the cycles that it goes through because it's very representative of um, our lives. And I, 
I messaged him straight away and was like, Simon, I love that picture. How much can I please purchase that from you? Um, and he was like, sure, it's yours. Um, come and collect it. And I was like, OK, I'll be there. So we arranged for myself to go around. And I went with the girls. It was a really lovely sunny day. We was talking about lots of stuff. Trying, it was all more personal stuff this time, actually. Simon had taken a step away from the media industry, essentially, to focus on family, health and life and love, I would say. Um, things that bring you joy. Um, however, he refused money. He didn't want to take anything from me told me how much he cared for me how special I was to him and how it was a gift from him to me and he would be really pleased for me to have it and I have it and I'm delighted to have that um yeah all I can say after that long kind of description of the interactions the various interactions I had with Simon is that you know I I I know that the world is a much sadder much duller place without him being here he was absolutely amazing i loved him i can actually say that i loved him he was like the godfather or father to many of us black brown people within the media industry he really was championing for all of the right things and he really did recognize you know who he was and his background which wasn't necessarily the same as mine or the other many people whose lives he touched but he was doing what was necessary and in all honesty if there were more people that were from the white middle class privileged community that actually had the passion the love the care the you know the drive that Simon had to use their voice use their resource use their you know their everything that they have access to for the greater good of community that they don't necessarily belong to but for one that they um, respect that they admire that they want to advocate for and champion if, they, if more people could do the job that Simon did then in all honesty it would be a much greater industry, a much greater world, a much greater country. Society would benefit from it. And it's a real, real, real loss to the industry, to the UK, to many people that knew and loved him. And for those that didn't know him, you know, he was an inspiration, will always be an inspiration. His name will never be forgotten. His legacy will never be forgotten. The things that he fought for and the integrity and the love and the passion that he had is infectious and he has um, ignited that fire in a lot of people and I suspect that with him passing it will be a reason to keep on keeping on with the good fight. I'm just deeply deeply sorry that I wasn't able to attend Simon's 80th birthday party which I was extremely sad about um, and this is just really bittersweet for me because I didn't get to see him that one last time but the memories that I have will live forever in my heart, in my mind, in my spirit and I will have nothing but fond memories and lots of love to Simon, to all who knew him especially to his family, his wife, his son um, and peace and love until we meet again Simon you are a legend and you are loved we will all miss you very, very, very much. Take care. Rest well. Peace be with you. Peace be with all of us. Pat Young, head of Skin in the Game Studios and a former Chief Creative Officer of BBC Television. Simon was an ally in every true sense of the word. He had knowledge which he was eager to impart to those of us who had just started out. He had access which he was keen to share with those of us who didn't. In an industry that struggles with straight talking, he never tired in speaking truth to power. He was an ally and he has gone way too soon. Rest in peace, Simon. My name is Perja Orchler and I'm an executive producer. I met Simon a handful of times when I was first starting out in the industry. 
And while I can't claim to have known him well, I always admired how hard and how consistently he fought for real change around diversity and inclusion. He cared a lot and that was incredibly valuable. Hello, I'm Salon Jerdang, OBE. Myself and everyone at the Black British Theatre Awards would like to pay a heartfelt tribute to Simon Albury, MBE. A devoted advocate, tireless campaigner for equality and a cherished champion and patron of the Black British Theatre Awards. From the very beginning in 2018, Simon's unwavering support and dedication were instrumental to nurturing this event and helping it flourish into what it is today. His boundless passion and commitment to championing diversity and inclusion in the arts will forever remain in our hearts. This year, we dedicate the ceremony to Simon's remarkable legacy, a legacy of courage, kindness, and an unyielding belief in the power of representation. His influence will be felt for generations to come, and we are profoundly grateful for the light he brought to our community. Our thoughts are with his loved ones during this time of loss. Rest in power, Simon. You will always be remembered. I first met Simon when he was CEO of the RTS back in the early 2000s. He was looking to start a diversity committee and asked me to consider chairing it. At the time, I had three children under five and a full-time job, but of course he got me to say yes. That was the only answer for a man with such integrity and one so aware of the inequalities being perpetuated in our industry. He saw that change was needed and didn't hesitate to use his considerable power and reputation to bring it about. And most of all, he made all this necessary hard work both urgent and fun. And so we became not just colleagues but good friends plotting and planning in his airy, sunlit Wilson Conservatory. His wife, Phyllida, lent her support, accepting with great good grace that her home was now also a centre of operations and a buzzing hive of activity. We scrutinised the latest broadcasting diversity statistics. Were they entirely accurate? Or were they in part a cosmetic job hiding the fact that there was still real progress to be made? In the cause for change, Simon gathered together a group of high-profile advocates such as Lenny Henry. Simon left them with no choice but to get on the bus. He also inspired a whole generation of broadcast professionals to fight for equality and justice in the process to convey in no uncertain terms to the powers that they now needed to be on their toes. Little brother and sister are watching you. And Simon also knew how to enjoy himself and provide enjoyment for others. His parties were a reflection of his generous and all-embracing nature. You might find yourself sitting next to Michael Palin or a new BBC trainee or a member of Simon's extended family. Everyone was made to feel special and included. I'll never forget his final party event, a stonking celebration of his 80th, which included watching his son David, who played Bob Marley so brilliantly in the West End musical One Love, perform a truly incredible set. The party was everything Simon stood for and embodied. To quote Ken Kesey, you're either on the bus or you're off the bus. Simon was not just on the bus, but he was also its driver and conductor, for which we are all truly grateful. We will miss him dearly. Joanna Abayi, MD and founder of Blue Moon and Partners. For me, Simon Albury was more than a friend. He was family and he was the person that I went to for pretty much everything from a laugh, an interesting story, by support, company, you know, you name it. He was that person that was very much most things to me. And what's been beautiful when I have been online and seen what others are saying about him is that I wasn't alone in that feeling, in having that relationship with him. What he did for the industry is evident in the legacy and the impact that he's left behind and certainly the impact that he's had on individuals and the hole, the gaping hole that he leaves in in my life um, feels quite total 
Um, and so this message really is just to say what an incredibly wonderful man Simon is and how sorely he is missed already, how much his absence is felt almost in basically instantly, instantly upon finding out the news. Um, I see my role now, I guess, as continuing to do all the things I think he would have hoped we would do as individuals and what he hoped for us, but also to keep pushing for um, the equity that he wanted so many of us to have across the industry. One thing I would like to also say is, imagine how huge a heart um, a person has if he has the ability to make every person feel like the most special, uh, most successful, most talented, most skilled, most sort of insert any positive word that's relevant. What a heart he has if everyone that's engaging with him can tell a similar story about the way he made them feel. And, and, and for that, I just think uh, not just the industry, but the world has, has lost, physically in any case, one of the most amazing, kind, smart, sweet, <laughs> remarkable people. And I will forever be incredibly grateful that he was such a significant part of my life. May he rest in peace and know that he has left uh, a footprint on the heart of hundreds.